The following video may contain sensitive topics. The views and opinions of the presenter to these are plainly his own. Furthermore, any and all views and opinions of the presenter do not, in any way, reflect the views, opinions, statements, and advocacies of his personal contacts, his family, his affiliations, and his profession. While the presenter makes a commitment that all content is original, he is obliged to cite references or acknowledge resources mentioned or used in the production of this video. This disclaimer is also written in the description below. We all lived through 2020, which is considered the annus horribilis of the 21st century at this point. And 2021 presented a lot of happy and relieving developments despite the hiccups brought about by COVID-19 as well as other setbacks and downsides. With that said, the question is this. Does Anno Domini Jesu Christi 2021 merit the distinction of Annus Mirabilis for the time being? I say both yes and no, and here's why. Hi, my name is Ian Rignon, and welcome to the final episode of The Intrepid Show for 2021. And today, we review the year we would leave in the next few hours by the time of this video's release. It goes without saying too much that 2021 was a year of languishing and uncertainty. The COVID-19 pandemic presented a number of mutations and vaccine complications. Tensions between China and all of its neighbors heat up. Several riots in Europe, Cuba, and elsewhere, and an, an attempted uprising Amer in America, a coup d'etat in Myanmar, another rocket shootout in Israel and Palestine, and, and full-scale wars in Armenia and Ukraine brought tension on the global stage. Corporate, organizational, and even family infighting and tensions regarding policy also affected some sectors of, the co of commerce, trade, and public safety as well as religion, innovation, scientific discoveries, and even national prestige. Several events made headlines that impacted the rest of the world, and who can forget the moment Kabul fell to, to the Taliban after 20 years of Western intervention. Back home, we witness what I can consider the decay of our social fiber here in the Philippines. Because of COVID-19, People everywhere express their frustrations regarding their lives and livelihoods. Most recently, a storm ruined the Christmas of, South, of Southern Visayas and Northern Mindanao. And with an election near coming, the path to uncertainty continues. Common themes this year that felt sad or at least disappointing were the breakup of romantic partners and the divorce or mutual alienation of married couples as well as the numerous cases of infidelity, hypersexualization in the media, and dare I say, the creeping in of outright hedonism in our country. The year was also marked with, with the loss of trust towards the very people or institutions the public previously trusted. Now, depending on who you ask, Catholics either see the church this year as a beacon of reason and hope, or a circus full of shit shows, or probably both. While there were great anecdotes as to how the Catholic Church continues her life of service, there were also disappointments and displeasures that happened. What made this year impactful was the publishing of the papal motto proprio Tradiciones Custodes, which made those who loved the, the old form of the Mass, myself included, either angry, disappointed, resentful, or cynical towards the church, or all of the, all of the above. While they celebrated the appointment and ordination of the liturgy savvy priest and papal master of ceremonies Guido Marini as the Bishop of Tortona in Italy, they also questioned the mutual recognition of baptism between the Philippine Church and the Iglesia Filipina Independiente after the latter firmly set their baptism in the Trinitarian formula. Cardinal Jose Advincola was also appointed the Archbishop of Manila after more than a year of it being sede vacante. Its auxiliary bishop and administrator, Broderick Pabillo, was reassigned to Palawan, which some called a well-deserved reassignment. And with the cycle of life, we reflect 
the death of loved ones and public figures who left us in 2021. These include the following. General Danilo Lim, Larry King, Nunuk Nuriyanimi, the woman who flavored the instant noodle version of the Indonesian dish Mi Goreng, Captain Sir Thomas Moore, Christopher Plummer, Eli Soriano, Father Joaquin Bernas SJ, Claire de la Fuente, Hans King, Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, the crew of the Indonesian Navy, su Navy submarine KRI Nangala, Apollo 11 crew member Michael Collins, entertainment writer Ricky Lo, the crew of a, of a Philippine Air Force S-70A Black Hawk undergoing night operations training, the passengers and crew of a Philippine Air Force C-130 aircraft that crash-landed in Sulu, former President, Aqui per former President Benigno Aquino III, who died on the same day Cardinal Advincula was installed Archbishop of Manila, Zenaida Quezon Avancena, Celia Diaz Laurel, Wally Gonzalez, and most recently, Anglican Archbishop and Nobel Prize awardee Desmond Tutu, and many others, including an uncle of mine who died this year. But not everything in 2021 was doom and gloom. If not for a lot of setbacks this year, 2021 can be considered as a contender for the title Annus Mirabilis, or the, year, or the Wonderful Year. What can be considered as the best, best moments of this year are the multitude of space flights that quote-unquote pushed the envelope, not only of the imagination but also of the space industry in general. Most of the credit goes to SpaceX, no matter how beleaguered they may be at this point due to the delays in their Spar Starship program, which I think is partially their own doing, as well as uh, some, some lawsuits that their CEO and chief engineer Elon Musk is facing. They, they managed to make grain silo-like rockets fly up to 12 kilometers up. Sure, there were explosions in the first three landings, four if you include the post-landing explosion of SN10, but the flight and landing of the prototype SN15 was one of the key highlights of the year. And to this date, nothing was attempted to top that, even though SpaceX wanted to fly their Starship and the booster rocket uh, be below it, which is called the Super Heavy, into space. But of course, we all know space is fucking hard. And no matter how angry someone is, the fact that people are more into celebrities and shitty politics than a, than a focus on philosophy and science just makes me think that we have been expecting too much on endeavors that, while benevolent and beneficial to humanity, could not be supported by anyone just because it's not aligned to their interest. Also, it was the year of space tourists. It is about time for humanity to venture into the ultimate frontier and contribute in whatever way possible the dream of exploring and potentially habitating worlds other than our own. However, I do not consider the passengers and crew of Blue Origin's New Shepard and Virgin Galactic's VSS Unity and extensively the Russian film director and actress crew and the Japanese billionaire and his assistant that ascended to the International Space Station this year via Soyuz uh, rockets to be astronauts as their only contribution to spaceflight was either the amount they paid from their deep, deep pockets or to raise awareness of the immense possibilities space endeavors can offer to humanity, though both reasons are not intrinsically bad in themselves. I can still consider the four people that participated in space, SpaceX's Inspiration4 mission as civilian, non-professional astronauts as they performed scientific experiments in their four days in orbit aside from the charity work attached to the mission. But other than that, all the other civilian flights are all just to tell people they have the fucking money to fly at the edge of space, depending on what standard people might want to apply. So yeah, call me the cynical astronaut. Fuck space. But let me go ahead and take off that cynical astronaut hat for, uh, for now, because 
there are other key space missions that launched this year that were very, very welcomed. These were the Parker, the Parker Solar Probe. Uh, actually, this was, this was launched uh, a, a few years ago, but right now, it has, it has uh, collected data about the sun's top topmost layer, and the National Aeronautics and Space Administration uh, says that uh, the Parker Solar Probe, quote-unquote, touched the sun's most topmost layer. There were also the Mars missions of UAE's Hope Orbiter, China's Tianwen-1, and America's Perseverance rover, rover and Ingenuity Helicopter, making NASA the very first a uh, space agency to fly an aircraft in another planet. There was also the habitation of the Chinese Tiangong Space Station, several alterations and additions to the International Space Station, the Lucy mission to the Trojan asteroids of Jupiter, the double asteroid redirection test, the imaging X-ray polarimetry explorer or XP, and the long-delayed launch of the James Webb Space Teles Telescope that launched on an Ariane 5 rocket on Christmas Day. 2021 was also the year of songs and small and big wins. From what I remember, earlier this outgoing year, Nathan Evans, a Scottish mailman, became viral because he sang sea shanties. And because of that, a lot of people are singing. But yeah, that's how it goes. But who cannot remember the time Filipina weightlifter Heidelin Diaz stole the headlines by winning our country's very first legitimate Olympic gold medal in Tokyo. It was also in the Tokyo Olympics that we got to see three medal finishes in boxing, making the delayed 2020 Olympics the country's best performance in the Games since its first participation in 1924. Honestly, I never thought we would have such a performance that we became the dark horse among the ASEAN countries. And to top it all off, Diaz also got engaged to her coach and partner, Julius Naranjo, the man who ran to embrace her in the very first instance the world realized a Filipina would bring home her country's first legit Olympic gold. As the headlines put it, from gold medal to diamond ring, May their marriage be happy and fruitful indeed. In conclusion, the year 2021 was an improvement from Anus Horribilis 2020, yet the wonders this year made were counterbalanced with the equally numerous, if not tremendous, number of tragedies and setbacks. Nevertheless, we must move on and move forward to 2022. Indeed, we all hope that the new year would not suck like this one. And besides, we survived this year. As long as we are alive, that is achievement enough. And we are bound to thank God or whoever you, uh, divine being you worship that we can still be of service to him and to our neighbors, friends, and to everyone. With all that said, and on behalf of of the Father General, the Mother Superior, and the rest of the Rignon family, this is Intrepid Ian Rignon, still wishing you a Merry Christmas and a grace-filled New Year, and still reminding you to at all times be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Until then, look alive, stay alive, and for the last time in 2021, thank you for watching or listening. See you next year. This has been Ian Rignon, and this year's done. Ian out.